Hello my hungry friends! Today we're making Polish style homemade sauerkraut, kapusta kishona. Welcome back friends! This is Polish Kitchen and my name is Anna and here I teach you how to make Polish food. Today we're gonna go back to our roots and I'm gonna teach you how to make sauerkraut the way my grandparents taught me back in the 80s. Today's video is sponsored by Bacik, my favorite by far producer of Polish products on the US market today. Bacik has been providing the best quality products to its customers since 1991. Their products are made based on traditional Polish recipes with an all natural approach and with only a few exceptions without preservatives, added sugars and hard to read ingredients. Their grocery products range from natural jams honey, syrups to beets, sauerkraut, mushrooms, and pickles. Their smoked meats are cooked slowly over smoke with selected hardwoods the traditional way. Their dairy products range from a variety of cottage cheeses to yellow cheese, smoked cheese, and many prepared in the traditional European style. To browse through their products line and see where you can purchase your favorite Polish products, go to bacik.com and polishfooddirect.com. So let's get started. As you can see, uh, us Poles go all out. This is how uh, producers in Poland prepare us for the winter season and make it easy for us. You can buy, uh, this is a 10 kilo bag of shredded sauerkraut and you can get those at the market, like the one you may have seen on our channel before. Uh, and it's so easy and nice. The cabbage comes shredded already. All you have to do is mix it with salt and your sauerkraut is souring for the winter. So I'm going to show you an easy way to make this at home. Um, and if you cannot make it at home, Bacik is here for you. One of the products is sauerkraut already prepared, soured, all natural, no preservatives. And if you've watched my channel before, you know how I always preach about the ingredients on pickles and sauerkraut. Uh, water and salt is what's in this product and that's what you want when you're buying yours. Plus it tastes really good. It tastes like it's supposed yeah. to. I'm in love with them. I would use their products all the time when we lived in, in the East Coast. I love them. Let's get this big thing out of the way so I can show you how to make this. To make our sauerkraut, we start with clean hands and a sanitized uh, dish that our sauerkraut is gonna sour in. Today I'm gonna use a glass, it's just a cookie jar with a lid. You could do a plastic bucket, food grade uh, plastic bucket. You can even do a food grade plastic bag which actually works pretty well too because you have it sealed and there's no air going to your cabbage so whatever your poison is uh, use the container that you want I'm just gonna do it on a small scale here to show you and then my large bag is gonna go into a larger bucket that I have uh, so as I mentioned my glass is sanitized and my cabbage is shredded to a relatively small or not small, a thin shred. Uh, and I encourage you to slice it on a, in either a food processor or on one of those hand shredders, whichever you have or whichever, um, whichever you have available. Just make sure it's thin. Thick pieces are not gonna sour well. We want, we want the kind of brine that is created by cabbage to get into uh, the middle of the slice. So we're going to have to slice our cabbage. And as I mentioned, ours comes with a carrot sliced, it, uh, shredded into it also. You can do that or you can skip it and just do cabbage. Uh, you can also add more spices into your cabbage. I just like to go salt only because I don't want any other flavors. I like to add flavors after the cabbage is um, soured. If you were going to add some uh, spices or things, what, what's common? Uh, some people add uh, cloves of garlic mm. and some people add 
kminek, which is um, caraway seed, mm -hmm. which I prefer not to uh, just because I want, I don't want to add it in the front because then all of my cabbage is going to uh, taste like caraway. And I can add that in the recipe that I'm using. So I prefer just to go straight salt, a little bit of carrot for color. And the carrot is going to turn the cabbage a uh, little, little bit kind of yellow, orangish color. Uh, so, super easy. Um, one kilo of sliced cabbage to one tablespoon of salt. Easy. Don't have to think about it too much. Uh, and so, what you, all you're going to do... I like to measure out in the, in the beginning of my recipe. So if I know I have 10 kilos of cabbage, I measure out 10 tablespoons of salt, and then I know I have to just mix it in as I go. And normally I put it in a larger bucket, and then I dump a little bit of cabbage in there, and then I dump my salt. And have I talked about salt yet? Besides the fact that you're going to add a tablespoon to it, okay. no, no. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> so you're going to have to use salt that's not iodized. Best would be uh, rock salt or sea salt. Something that has not been uh, processed with any, any other added chemicals. So I have uh, rock salt from a Polish mine here in Poland. So easy to do with a small amount like this. Even easier to do with a larger amount if you're doing it in a large bucket because you can dump a bunch of cabbage, then you dump your salt. And for now, I'm just gonna kind of go like this. Oh, I'm spilling it already. I'm used to working in large <laughs> quantities. <laughs> and salt is in here. And what you're gonna do is just you're gonna squeeze the cabbage. And this is letting the juices flow from the cabbage and this is what's going to create the brine. We want the brine to cover all of our cabbage. And if we leave this to sit for just 20-30 minutes, you'll see how this is producing water already. So I've just gone with my hands and smushed the cabbage a little bit. That's good enough. You can already see a color change. You can see the color change and you can see the moisture coming. And at this time, we're ready to put uh, our cabbage into our container. And we're, so I'm just gonna do like this. And in about 20, 30 minutes, when once we see that our cabbage is producing a little bit of water, you're gonna go in here and either with your hands or with a utensil, like the good old pauka, you can, like this. But I want to give this about 20, 20 to 30 minutes to get the juices in there. So then I would go and do this over and over until my jar fills. So just give me a minute. This should be the last of it. And you want to go up to about, you know, leave a little bit of room at the bottom, uh, at the top. Uh, so when the juices start uh, flowing up to the top a little bit more and it starts bubbling, it'll bring the cabbage up just a tiny bit. Uh, so you want to make sure you're not spilling out of your jar. You have a question? Yeah, I was wondering, when you were growing up as a kid and you learned about this in the 80s, I imagine I was with Grandma and Grandpa, or yep. Bob Tanjadik. What they had like a farm of the Is that where you did this stuff, or was no. it, was it in Stuttgart or what? No, we actually did this in our Kiev home. Aha. Uh -huh. We, uh, my dad built a house uh, in the 70s and the end of the 70s, and then we moved in the, in early 80s, and we scrubbed out the bathtub, just <laughs> a regular big um, cast iron bathtub. Yeah, scrubbed it out real good. Uh, my dad was a woodworker, so he made this um, this cabbage shredder that was as wide as a head of cabbage, and it had like three or four blades uh, going across, and then there was like this wooden, it was made out of wood obviously, and then it had this wooden box that you would put cabbage in, and that would go over the bathtub, like one person, I remember sitting on it to hold it down <laughs> when I was little, and you know, one person would push the cabbage in the little wooden box to shred it. 
and the bathtub would fill up. So a giant mandolin. Yeah. And then we had a bucket um, and then we would haul the cabbage in like smaller buckets down to the basement and that, that was, it was so nice to have the basement because the basement would be cool and there was this huge, uh, it was probably 100 liter uh, uh, barrel, plastic barrel with a lid and the cabbage would go in there and no one measured. Right. And I normally don't measure either. You just kind of eyeball it. Um, you throw a little bit of cabbage in there, you know, like a pinch of <laughs> shredded carrot and then like a thing of salt and someone would, you know, mix and mix it and then you throw it in a barrel and it would sit in the barrel for the rest of the winter. Okay, so do you have any more questions? <laughs> okay. Uh, so as I mentioned, leave a little room um, and in about 20, 20 to 30 minutes, we're gonna start seeing a little bit of juice being produced. So at that time, we'll come back and we'll continue with our recipe. After 20 minutes, we can see that our cabbage has gotten plenty of juices. And the juices have to live on top of our cabbage to protect it from the world. And uh, our, our cabbage is ready to be set aside. And we have to cover it to keep the cabbage down and juices to cover it from the top a little bit. So I came up with this um, uh, hack, I think kids these days say. They do. Uh, to just use a plastic bag, clean plastic bag, and I fill it with water. I'll probably get a little bit more. And then this will get in the, I'll seal this. And this will get in the crevices of the, whatever container you're using. Uh, and keep our cabbage down. So just watch your cabbage and it'll start bubbling in a couple of days and you'll see the bubbles forming on top. Uh, so right now the water is just super salty or this, this brine. Uh, in about three days when you start seeing bubbles, I encourage you to taste it just so you can see how the cabbage is changing in flavor. But once you see, once you see bubbles, uh, in about three, four days, uh, you'll take a wooden utensil like this and just p pick up your bag or pick up, uh, if you're using a plate to uh, weigh it down, you'll pick that up and just puncture some holes in, in the cabbage to let some of that, some of those, they call them gases, uh, out. And then cover it again like this. Just make sure it's a loose cover uh, so there's airflow. And then you'll set this aside on your counter and just let it be. The fermentation will take uh, about 10 days. When it's done, I have a crack right here. It'll look like this. i get a, a fork. And as soon as I picked up the, the bag, you can smell it. You can smell the, the cabbage is fermented and look how it changed uh, in color and it's translucent and it's it's ready it's done 10 days have gone by i'm going to taste it mm. gorgeous it's sweet it's sweet and sour that is good <laughs> that is good cabbage um at 10 days if you are doing a large uh, container like this, it needs to be stored in the cooler temperature. If you have an extra fridge or if you have a cold cellar, you can just make sure it, the, the top is covered uh, with something like this will work. Or you can transfer them into smaller jars and also you'd have to keep it in a uh, cooler temperature and some of them may still have a little bit of fermentation going. So it may be a good idea to either place it on a tray or uh, put a plastic something on the bottom. You have a question? I do. Uh -huh. So can you use any old container to, to ferment this in? Like if I had a big steel pot, 
Like you can't uh, use metal. Okay, so, so ceramic, you, glass, clay, uh, glazed, glazed, yeah, glazed clay. uh, like this. Glass, glass jars, plastic, food grade containers. Uh, I actually like using a plastic container, and I have one down here. And it's full of. <laughs> That's my container. It's not full, but it's, not it's full. Um, it will be. <laughs> Uh, I like to do it in plastic just because uh, it comes with the lid, I can cover it and it, it's not, I mean this isn't messy either I guess. Uh, this has been just sitting here on my counter. Um, but once you transfer to a smaller jar, this will keep until next summer. Uh, it just has to be stored in a, uh, in a cooler temperature. And as I mentioned, um, once you put it in jars, you can screw the jar lids on and everything. Uh, but just to be safe and depending on when you're storing it, if you don't want it overflowing, uh, just put it on a tray or line your shelving with uh, some plastic. Would you like to try some? Yes. It's delicious, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so your cabbage is done. It's ready for eating. You can make salads out of it. You can make, uh, you can bra braise it with uh, sausage and other meats. There's a bunch of recipes. My mouth's watering <laughs> on polishyourkitchen.com. Um, I hope you visit us and check out all the recipes. If you don't want to get into all of this, just get yourself a jar of bachik sauerkraut. <laughs> And be done is what would Mark do. That's what I would do. <laughs> and where do I get Bachik if it's not my local store? You can go to Bachik.com and check out their locations. And thanks to Bachik for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you come back again and see our video, our Friday videos when you, we take you out to <laughs> when kitchens close and we show you a culinary scene of Poland. Please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time. Smacznego!